And I ain't awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe is there right, Come on, let's sing it out then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. Come on, how great, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Come on, choir, then sings. Then 
brought us from death to life. And because of that fact, because we're raised to life in Christ, we have the best life now. Come on, say it. I've got the best life now. Living the best life now. I've got the best life now. Oh, Jesus. Come on, can we say that with you? I've got the best life. Good morning. Well, welcome back. I am so glad that you are back with us. And I hope and pray that you had a wonderful night last night celebrating the start of your student's journey here at Azusa Pacific University. And if your student forgot to send their picture of the candela, please send it again to campuslife at apu.edu. We would love to see their faces and celebrate it with them. So. Um, this morning, we have the privilege of kind of sharing with you resources that are available as we continue to walk with your students. We want to make sure that you have resources as well. I know that you've prepared your students to be ready for their journey here at Azusa. And we also recognize that we need you to be prepared to support them, um, no matter how long or short their journey might be here at APU. So we will be hearing from um, Dr. Paul Kack, Dr. Bobby Duke, and Dr. Keith Hall, and also from um, Mr. Corn Corbin Hornbeek, I'm so sorry, uh, so that they could give you resources, whether it's about um, classroom experiences and how do we integrate our faith into their classrooms, because that is so critical to their experience here at Azusa, as well as resources for you as parents and families so that you could know how to remain connected with our institution. And then lastly, with um, how do you understand their stages of their experiences here at Azusa? And so you will be um, given resources, and I hope and pray that it will help you with your own journey as well. So now I have the privilege of introducing to you Dr. Paul Kack and Dr. Bobby Duke. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Kack, and I work here at APU as our executive director in the Office of Faith Integration. Uh, so I've been here for 15 years. Actually, Dr. Duke and I started the same year. We're, we're on our 15th year anniversary here. Must explain our, our gray beards, right? <laughs> I also get to be an APU dad. I've twice been where you are, uh, having my two sons come to APU. I've, I've stood up here and I've, I've sat with you as a parent, uh, trying to sort out what it's going to mean to drop my son off at this uh, university. And like you, we had to make decisions as to why uh, and where we would send our uh, sons to school. And we were really committed to giving them a, a distinctly faith-based education, which is, of course, what APU is aiming to do. And so Dr. Duke and I are here to talk to you about the two sides to the coin of that approach to Christian education. <clears throat> we want to help you to see the way we go about this in uh, Bible classes and then in other kinds of classes at APU. Uh, this sort of begins for me with my story. Can I tell my university story? And, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I went to Cal State University of Northridge. Uh, Cal State Northridge was not a Christian university, uh, so I did not get a Christian education. Um, in fact, some of my teachers aimed to unravel my Christian faith. So I decided if I was going to learn about how my, uh, my learning in university uh, was going to enrich my faith, I needed to do that for myself. So I was a speech communication major, and every class that I took, I asked two questions. I said, first of all, how does my faith lead me to think about my class, what I'm learning differently, than if I didn't have a Christian faith? How does it lead me to think about uh, my, my discipline, my subject matter, uh, in a way that maybe <clears throat> challenges or contradicts what I'm learning, or maybe enhances what I'm learning? Uh, how does the history of my faith help me understand these things in a unique sort of way? And I was young, but I was eager to sort of ask that question. And then the second question was to say, how does what I'm learning help me grow in my faith? How does what I'm learning, uh, how is it going to help me in my ministry to the junior hires at church and, and in my life of prayer and in my knowledge of God? And so I'd ask those questions in classes like uh, theories of persuasion. 
Uh, in that class, we had to write a final paper in which we all wrote about theories of persuasion uh, and, uh, from the perspective of a great speaker in history. People were picking folks like, like Ronald Reagan and John F. Kennedy and Margaret Thatcher. I picked Charles Haddon Spurgeon. He was known as the Prince of Preachers uh, in the late 19th century in uh, England. And I wanted to see how his commitment to the dependence on the Holy Spirit, uh, his commitment to the truth of God's word, uh, re related to these theories of persuasion that I was learning. I could give you a lot more examples of that, but that experience I had and gave myself is exactly what APU aims to do intentionally. But I'm ahead of myself. How about your story, Dr. Duke? Well, my story begins at a uh, what's called a Bible college. I went to a place in Portland, Oregon named Multnomah University, and every student at that university was getting a degree that was getting them ready for full-time Christian ministry. So my experience was quite different than yours, Paul, when it comes to the classes I was in and how I was surrounded. I did end my academic journey at UCLA, so the very large state school where uh, I would wrestle differently with issues of faith. But when it comes to my undergrad experience, uh, I was surrounded all the time with Bible, theology, ministry type classes. Uh, here at APU, whatever your discipline, our goal is to have you view that major as a ministry. So if you're social work or criminal justice or psychology or philosophy, whatever degree you have, how can you use that for the glory of God in the future? How can you make life better for people through that discipline? How that's done, and one of the ways we do that, that my own school, the School of Theology Overseas, for all undergraduates here at APU, is our general education. And every student will have 18 units of Bible, theology, ministry, philosophy, that are interwoven to really ask those questions of why and how can I be a difference maker in this world? How can I make the world better through my discipline that I've chosen? So every one of you will have this common experience of our Bible theology ministry classes throughout your time here, and they're intentionally made so that you will reflect even deeply about faith in your other classes that Paul will share with you about. Yeah, so the Bible professor's job is to teach the Bible, right? And Bobby's faculty do an amazing job at that in teaching theology classes. That's their discipline. That's their emphasis and their focus. But if you come into a finance class, well, the job of the finance professor is to teach finance. The sociology professor teaches sociology. Uh, the kinesiology professor teaches about the, the human body and how to keep it moving and healthy. That's their job. But they're all going to do it, whether Bible professors or kinesiology professors, through that lens of Christian faith. That is what we do here at APU. Uh, whether they're in a class that's explicitly religious or not explicitly religious, that lens guides us to think. How does our faith help us to see what we're learning in unique ways? And how is what we're learning going to help enhance our Christian faith? This is why APU has established an office of faith integration that I get to oversee that's there to support our faculty in this work. This is a challenging task, important, but a growing opportunity for faculty. They're up for the task, but to learn to do better and better at that. That's what we try to support our faculty in doing in every class for every department at APU. Now, the great thing about this is that we're in partnership uh, with our amazing people in the uh, Division of Student Affairs. You've met Shino and Koba, and, and you'll meet other people along the way. Uh, Alex and team who oversee this particular event support our students, and we are collaborators in this overall goal of helping our students become formed in their relationship with Christ. Uh, we're interested, all of us, in how do we help students become more, uh, grow as Christian disciples and as Christian scholars. The folks in student affairs do a lot of that outside the classroom. Uh, we concerned about whole person development, while faculty do that inside the classroom, taking the subject that we're learning and thinking about it from that distinctly Christian perspective. College is this really unique and special time in a person's life. Uh, at no other time in a person's life, unless they go back to school for graduate programs, uh, do they get a chance to immerse themselves in learning. So we take that seriously, not only from the perspective of the discipline, but, but from the perspective of faith. How does knowing and learning the truth and goodness of, of God and God's world affect what I want to do as a difference maker, as Dr. Duke said? Whether I'm learning chemistry or, or uh, accounting or, or literature all of those are going to prepare me to serve God, and that's what we aim to do from the perspective of faith integration. 
And even as we are transitioning into a very unusual semester having remote learning, uh, I can assure you as a dean that as I reviewed uh, idea scores and as I even looked at our uh, classes from the spring where we did have a remote component, uh, the faith integration and the activities the students are doing are still having them ask these same questions. What am I doing in this world through this discipline? Next time you're on campus, on West Campus, I'll give you a little challenge to find the John Wesley statue. I think we might have a picture of the John Wesley statue here on the, on the screen, but this statue is over on West Campus right outside the Duke building. Actually, I am not related in any way to John and Marilyn Duke, who the building is named after, although uh, obviously I do need to get to know them since they've given money to APU. <laughs> but uh, outside the Duke building is this John Wesley statue. And why I like walking past the statue is it was actually John Wesley an 18th century pastor, when I read in college, when I was an undergrad, the address to the clergy that he wrote in the 18th, 18th century, uh, it was inspiring me to go on and become someone who studied the biblical languages, knew history, knew geography, knew all the liberal arts, but did it through a lens of love. John Wesley said, an ounce of love is worth a pound of knowledge. We're going to give you a whole lot more than a pound of knowledge this next year, these next four years. But our goal is that four years from now, when you walk across that stage and you have a piece of paper that says kinesiology, applied exercise science, psychology, whatever it says that you ask that question, how is this knowledge going to make me a more loving person? How can I love God and love my neighbor through these four years that I'm here? So I'm going to close us here in a prayer of commissioning, really a prayer saying, how can each of you and each of your families be part of this journey with us as we ask these questions of a Christ-centered, faith-integrated education? So let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you and thank you for everyone on this, on this meeting. I pray you will give wisdom and guidance to the students and that they will ask these questions of themselves. How am I going to make a difference in this world? through whatever discipline I choose. Thank you for everyone who is part of today. Thank you for all the hours of uh, activity that has gone into planning. And I pray for each student that as they go into this semester, they will do it with a diligence to just ask those questions of, of how can I be loving to others through this. Uh, we commission these students for your glory. For it's in your name I pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to welcome Corbin Hornbeek, our Director of Advancement. Uh, to the stage, and he's going to be sharing with you uh, some different items that uh, you need to be aware of. So, Corbin. Well, good morning, Azusa Pacific University families. Uh, it's my privilege to welcome you as parents uh, into the Azusa Pacific University family. Uh, I think what you have been hearing this morning and what you will hear for the rest of the morning is that APU and uh, an education at APU is not just simply an education. It is uh, truly a transformation. Four years from now, uh, when your son or daughter graduates, and hopefully we won't be doing this in a virtual uh, way four years from now, but four years from now, uh, your son and your daughter will be different people. I know that uh, because my wife and I are also APU parents. We've got two boys uh, here at Azusa Pacific University. We have a senior and we have a junior. And we have watched over the last three and four years how their lives have been changed and transformed. Uh, as Dr. Duke and Dr. Koch were uh, describing uh, the process of learning and growing uh, not only in your faith, but also in your discovery of who you are as a person and the world around you is really an amazing experience. So Azusa Pacific University parents are, uh, are part of the family. This is uh, your stakeholders in the mission. And we invite you uh, as parents to really fully engage. Over the next year, uh, our office, the Office of University Advancement, will be uh, developing and launching a new parent engagement program. You'll be hearing more about that. Uh, you'll be receiving some videos uh, at some point in the course of this weekend from some other uh, current and former APU parents. And, uh, and I know that will be helpful for you as you see how other parents have engaged in the mission of Azusa Pacific University. So I want to say a, just a heartfelt welcome. We look forward to getting to know you. Uh, we look forward to building relationships with you. We look forward to communicating with you. And uh, may God bless you this weekend 
as you learn more about APU and the kind of uh, educational and transformational experience that your son and daughter uh, will engage in. So thank you so much. Uh, at this point, it's my privilege to introduce to you uh, Dr. Keith Hall. Um, Dr. Keith Hall is a friend and a colleague, and I know you will be blessed by what he has to share this morning. So Dr. Hall, welcome. Well, good morning, and uh, it is great to be in your company, and we're so excited that you've taken time out to be a part of this session. Um, we are thrilled uh, to have an opportunity to engage with you, that now you are a part of this APU community. Uh, we want to pause and first thank you and commend you for the incredible work that you've done in supporting your student. And uh, we're just so honored that we are going to have an opportunity to partner with your student, but also partner with you because we understand that it takes a village uh, to promote the holistic, comprehensive development of your student. And especially during times like, like this. I mean, we know this is an unprecedented time. Make no mistake about it. Um, having to navigate the rigors of this public health crisis, all that we see taking place as it relates to racial and social unrest in, uh, in this nation, but also around the globe. Uh, but in our estimation, it affirms a true need uh, for students to see themselves as difference makers, to be solution thinkers, to be critical thinkers in addressing some of the major uh, social ills that we see happening uh, today. And uh, we are convinced that as your student engages this new academic year, uh, that they're going to be challenged to think in that way um, with a faith orientation, with a strong understanding of their personal identity and with the consciousness of what's happening in the world. And so as shared by my colleagues before me, we are just so honored and excited about stepping into this academic year, but more importantly, to be able to partner with your student and with, with you. Uh, so some of you may be wondering, well, what, are, what, what, what do you have in store for us for the next few moments? Um, and so what we would like to do is just give you a taste of uh, what your student will experience for maybe the next year to two to three years to four years uh, here at APU. Some of the developmental milestones that they will uh, encounter, uh, some of the psychosocial stages of development that they may, uh, that they may uh, encounter and demonstrate. Uh, and so we want to give you a taste of that. We do understand that we're talking to a very diverse group. Uh, group of family members. Uh, some of you, you've gone through this experience before. You've, you've had other children, older children who have graduated from college. And so I know some of what I'm sharing with you, it is not new information. And actually, you'll probably affirm me and just say, amen. I remember going through that with my, you know, with my second son or my second daughter. Uh, and so uh, we, we thank you in advance for being open to what is being shared. Uh, so we consider this to be the Just for Family session, right? Just for Family. So all of you who are participating, thank you for being present. I mean, we want to shout out moms and dads who have walked with their, with their children. We want to shout out grandmothers and granddads who have been of major support and siblings who have interjected humor and walk with their uh, with their their brother or sister you know through the high school days and now you're providing support as your uh, as your 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 brother or sister plans to engage this new academic year um, and even just the network of extended family and friends and pastors and ministers mentors who have who may be joining us at this time, we really want to acknowledge just the incredible work you have done to support the student to this point and the way you plan to be sustained uh, in terms of your engagement with, with the student. So one thing that I like to always start off with, and I hope this can inject some humor in your home this morning or wherever you're watching this, um, there is this mindset list uh, that we would like to highlight. Let's see if the... This cooperates with me. All 
All right. So this mindset list is, it, it kind of highlights the generational differences between uh, students who are incoming first year students and perhaps you parents or family members. Uh, and so I think this is, this will hopefully generate uh, some, some good humor for us. So if you take a look, it's very likely that your student who's an incoming first year student here at APU that they've never ever licked a stamp. All right. Most of us growing up, uh, when we were in college, we begged our parents for a booklet of stamps so that we could correspond with family through letters. Even that's a foreign notion, isn't it? This notion of, of writing a letter, sending it in the mail. You know, most of our communication now is electronically uh, shared via text, via email. Here's the other one. Yeah, a rotary phone. You know, many of you at home, you remember what this used to look like, the way that you had to put your finger in the designated spot for the phone. Now we have smartphones that do everything for us. Literally, things are voice activated. So it really highlights the disparity in times between one generation and, and the next. Here's the next one. Hybrid cars. You know, your students, since they've been born and since they've been looking around at cars that, that roam the, the highways, hybrid cars have always been a reality, and that was not the case for most of us. That was not the case. And here's the next one. Here's the next one here. Wi-Fi. So if you walk into a space and it doesn't have Wi-Fi uh, access, we've always perceived that place as being not credible, right? Students are always looking to access a space that, that shows this image that you see on your screen. I mean, if, 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 if an institution, if an organization, if a business, if a coffee shop lacks Wi-Fi, that's problematic. <laughs> and then lastly, yeah, Google. Your student has always grown up with this notion of Google. If I don't understand something, what do I do? I Google it, and it's definitely a part of the generational vernacular. Here's the last one, actually. So for most of us, when we see the initials LBJ, LBJ, most of us uh, who are older, we think of Lyndon B. Johnson. I would say for most of our students who are incoming students, they think of LeBron James, right? Big difference, you know? And it really highlights the different worldview, the history that we bring to, uh, to the context, the perspectives that our students have, which is just invaluable. So I thought I would highlight that just to generate a little humor within your homes this morning. So this is what I would love for us to do next, just for a few moments. I would love for us to take a look at some of the psychosocial stages of development um, that have been researched, uh, that are applicable to college students as they navigate their academic journey. And so uh, in just a few moments, we will pull these slides up so that you can take a look at them. Uh, the research is actually conducted by Arthur Chickering, who is uh, a developmental psychologist, and he's done amazing work as it relates to the developmental pro progressive uh, steps that students go through uh, as they advance from their first year to their second year to their third year, and he has them oriented based on based on vectors. And so, yeah, we want to talk about the changing, the changing student. So let me pause for a moment. I want to make sure I, we are abundantly clear, and you know this intuitively, but I think it's important just to highlight emphatically during this time. The next four to five years for your student, the one word that characterizes their experience is change. And I think it's so critical that we orient our expectations around that. And so perhaps interests that your students have had growing up throughout high school, do not be alarmed if those interests change. Don't be alarmed if their understanding of their identity, if it's expanded and it's changed. One thing that we know is that the college experience, it stretches a student. It expands their knowledge base. It tends to challenge them to be very self-reflective and understanding about who they are, but also becoming curious about others that they're learning with, serving with, growing with. And so let me walk you through 
these seven vectors that are uh, coined by Arthur Chickering, kind of highlighting some developmental uh, changes that many of our students have experienced. You're, it's very likely uh, that your students will also uh, experience some of these, these changes. So the first vector, and I'll go through these very quickly, developing competency. And so we want to share with you on the front end, it is not uncommon for students to change, uh, for example, their major, um, I, and some of you, I'm sure you've heard perhaps uh, your students say for years, hey, mom and dad, I want to be an engineer or mom and dad, I want to be a school teacher. And then once they come to college, for some reason, that interest, it shifts. And we know that that is not uncommon. Literature actually shares with us that about 50 to 70 percent of students uh, at the undergraduate level, they change their major at least once. And so it's important for you as a family member to be aware of that, to be supportive of, of this time of exploration for your student. I think it's fine to ask questions just to make sure that they are um, affirmed and confirmed when it comes to the decisions that they're making as it relates to major. But please know that this is completely normal and it's not uncommon. Vector two, which is the next slide uh, provided by, by Chickering. It's managing emotions. And so obviously students have been engaged in this process in high school. You know this, you've walked this walk with your students, but understand that the rigors in higher education, they become more challenging. And so it's not uncommon for some of our students uh, to be stretched more than what they're accustomed to, to have more rigorous assignments, more challenging content that, that forces them to be introspective. And that evokes an emotional response within our students. And so part of the process is for them to be aware of those emotions, how they're changing, but also learning how to manage them, uh, manage them well. The third vector is developing autonomy. And so, uh, you know, students for uh, most of your students, you know, they've always relied on your support to some degree in managing conflicts, dealing with personal needs and, 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 and challenges. But this is a unique time, I think, for us to support the independence of our students. What does that mean? So let's say that you have a student who anticipated an A on a paper, but they receive a B. I know, you know, for some who are listening, if you're mom or dad, you're thinking, I want to step in and I want to advocate for my child because when I read this paper, I think it's an A paper. And so we want to encourage you to, 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 to pump the brakes, to perhaps, you know, press the pause button, definitely process with your student, but give them the opportunity to manage that situation with their instructor independently, right? That promotes their autonomy. That promotes their, their, their individual development. And we know that when students are able to develop skill and competency around autonomy, that that's not a skill set that's just restricted to the campus or the university academic experience, but it translates to their own profession where they can advocate for themselves, where they develop the skills to be able to be in conflict and hopefully move to a place of resolution with the person that they are engaged in. Next is vect, uh, vector four, which is establishing identity. Um, you know, s some of the speakers uh, alluded to this earlier. Uh, this is such a critical time when students think intently and rigorously about who they are. All right. And identity is so complex. It is more than just a name. It's more than where I'm from. All right. And so here at APU, we value having opportunities to challenge students to think critically about who they are, their faith identity. How does that inform their worldview? How does that inform their activity, their behavior, their service? Who are they racially? Who is your student culturally? Right? How do they see themselves um, integrating within a community that's so diverse what are the lived experiences that may be informing their purpose and what they're called to do? We want students to think deeply about these elements of identity. And I'll tell you the reason why. We firmly believe here at APU that there's a distinct connection between capacity and calling, right? 
I mean, if you take a look at it, even in the Old Testament, there was a reason why God chose Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. If you evaluate his identity, his lived experience, there was purpose there. Right? And there's a biblical theme all throughout scripture, and we believe that that theme is still true today. And so it's hard for students to walk intently into their calling if they don't understand who they are. And so they're going to be challenged to reflect on who they are. And obviously, um, we do that uh, in, a, in a way that's responsible. We take that very seriously. But we also understand that conversations that your student has with you also contributes to that process. So we thank you in advance for partnering with us in that regard. Vector five, vector five is interpersonal relationships, freeing them. So relationship building, uh, a, a big part of, of connecting self-evaluation and reflection is thinking, well, how do I also take who I am and what God has deposited within me and connect with others? Perhaps others who don't think the same way that I do. Others who come from different places than I do. And sees that as a learning opportunity and an opportunity to grow. All right. And so this is a special time for your student to start cultivating not shallow relationships, but these deep life giving relationships with their peers, with our faculty. All right. With mentors. Uh, one of our institutional values here at APU is community, and, and we take that seriously. Um, we want students to be connected. Like, it's not enough just for students to make an A in a class, and they're not cultivating deep, meaningful relationships with members of our community. And we see that as a priority. Our student affairs team, they take that very seriously. All right. And that's the reason why even this uh, this welcome, uh, uh, welcoming experience is it, it's, it's, it's laced with all of these opportunities for your students to connect and for us to connect with you, even if it is virtually. Uh, so this is very critical. We want to encourage you to challenge your student if they're not connecting with students, if they're not reaching out to their faculty, you know, to tactfully prompt them to do that, because we feel like the learning experience is optimized when students are in relationship. This is the other thing I'll share and then I'll move off my soapbox. We know based on higher ed literature that students that cultivate at least one meaningful relationship with someone that's a part of the community, it enables them to thrive. I'm serious, that one degree of social connectedness unlocks incredible potential within your student. And so if there are ways that you can be, um, you can offer encouragement for your students to engage socially, it's, it's absolutely critical. So, so again, we thank you for partnering uh, with us in that regard. Uh, the sixth vector is developing purpose. Um, so yes, we want students to, uh, to think deeply about their education, to think through their academic discipline, that's important, right? We want students to be preoccupied with the life of the mind. That's so important. But the other part is we want students to think about vocation. So what am I called to do? You know, what's the potential career that I can step into to really make a difference? Uh, and students are going to be challenged by faculty uh, to, to think through those things. We also have a career center on campus and professionals who walk students through and provide coaching and offer assessments that can help them with, um, uh, with developing clarity on, okay, what am, I, what am I called to do? How are my interests aligned with the interests of those who are working in certain avenues? And definitely our student affairs team, they create opportunities for students to think critically uh, about life goals, career goals, and making choices that complement um, a student's calling. Lastly, we have vector seven, which is establishing identity or integrity. And so by the, the time of commencement, we want your student, I mean, this is our hope, that, that your student develops the, the maturity, the critical understanding of themselves, of others, where they can step into spaces with confidence, equipped with their faith, even in spaces that are abstract and where there's uncertainty and still be able to thrive and find ways to offer a contribution. That's our hope, right? It's not enough just for 
a, your student to become a, a entrepreneur. It's not just enough for your student to become a nurse. It's not just enough for your student to become an engineer. Yes, we want them to be seasoned in those specific disciplines, but we want it to be coupled with their faith so that they're making a difference and they're advancing kingdom principles in these different arenas. That's what we need. I mean, let me pause. When we look at the society overall and what we see on the news, I don't think you would, ob you would object. I think you would agree with me. We need more Christians, believers, who have competency as it relates to a specific discipline, but it's coupled with faith that informs purposeful action that leads to positive change. And we're convinced that students that come to APU, they have the potential to do that. And so we're really excited about journeying with your student through this, through this process. So those are the sev seven vectors. I hope that was helpful for you. I think for many of you parents and family members that you've walked through uh, this journey with other students, I'm, I'm sure some of these uh, seem familiar, uh, but we want to make sure that we share these on the front end for all of our, our APU families so that it starts to inform your expectations. So you're probably asking, well, what role do we actually play in the process, especially during this season? You know, my, my students working, uh, learning remotely, uh, what role should we play? And this is so nuanced. Uh, and please know, we, I, I don't take a position of giving you advice that you don't already know. Uh, we have talked with some of our students and we actually polled them a, a couple of years back and we asked them this question. How can family members be of the greatest support to you as you engage in your academic journey? And so I think uh, some of their responses will be revealing uh, to you and maybe even helpful to you. So the first one is this. I know it's very broad, but I, I hope this, I hope you can receive this. Students shared I want my family members to expect change and please be supportive in the process. I think that's critical. I know I referenced that earlier, uh, but sometimes, you know, we don't think about it. This journey prompts change. And so how do, we, how do you provide support as your student expands their knowledge base as they grow in maturity? as their worldview expands and advances, uh, obviously on a foundation that you've already provided. So it's so important for you to, as we start this journey, as we prepare to step into this, this new academic uh, semester, it goes without saying, expect change. Number two, share your counsel, but allow your student to think critically, all right? Share your counsel because your wisdom is vital. Your student needs it, right? They long for it, but also give them an opportunity to be able to think critically and build their own autonomy and skill set to make decisions that are fruitful and informed by their faith, right? And that's what we want for your student. That's what you want for your student. So please take note of that. Share your counsel. It's desired. And we know that there's wise counsel in numbers. We're familiar with that proverbial thought. But it is important for your student to be able to, to be challenged and to think critically as they come face to face with challenging circumstances uh, within their academic journey. Next, please ask questions, but not too many. All right. Some of you are all, you're, you're tempted to turn the screen off. Please do not close the laptop. Do not turn off the screen, okay? But, but please hear this. You can ask questions, but I would encourage you not inter interrogate your student, right? So, so the students want to know that you're curious about their experience. They want to know that you're still engaged, and that's a way that we uh, show our engagement by asking questions. Uh, but, but there is a threshold where we can ask too many questions where it feels like uh, perhaps, and this is what I've heard from students, I'm, I'm in a courtroom, right? And, and, and so we, we want to give students space, um, but we still want to remain engaged. And I know that looks differently in each family and each uh, parent-child dynamic or family um, student dynamic. And so obviously you'll use your discretion, but please uh, take, this, take this thought to, to note. All right, lastly, stay connected, but give me space too, all right? So stay connected, you know, again, ask questions, you know, be curious about the student's experience, 
but also give them the space to be able to grow and again to develop that that degree of of independence and and autonomy all right so the last thing i want to share with you is um this notion of student success and uh, Dr. Simon, she highlighted this, uh, Dr. Cack and Dr. Duke, they also referenced this. You know, one of our hallmarks here at APU is this notion of holistic success, holistic student success. I mean, as an institution, we feel like we are failing students if students are literally just making good grades, thinking intently about their, uh, their academics, but they're not growing in other areas. Right? What makes APU different than other institutions is that, yes, we want students to have a stellar intellectual experience that stimulates them cognitively, academically. We want them to have that. That is, that is a non-negotiable. But we also want students to think about their faith. How is God leading you in this process? Actually, how is your faith and your biblical um, Knowledge, how does that even couple with your discipline? That's critical for us. Not only that, we want students to think critically about cultivating meaningful relationships and not just with students that look like you or believe like you, but we want students to engage diverse peers, diverse faculty to become more cultured, to become more equipped to engage a very globally conscious community, nation, world. Uh, and so that's really important for us. So we want students to think civically. We want students to think about ways that they can render service. And in our estimation, that makes up holistic student success. It's not just making a B or an A in a general education course or a course of major. That's important. We don't minimize that. That's a part of the academic experience. That's absolutely critical. But I hope you know, as professionals here at APU, we also want to see your student grow and develop and mature in these other domains of, of, uh, of, their, of, their, of their lives. So we are here at APU. We value um, this, this strengths notion. And so please hear me out. We do not believe that your student comes to this institution as a blank slate. We recognize that you have poured into your student. God has deposited incredible resource within them. They have incredible talents. And so we feel like the academic experience here at APU needs to challenge them to graduate those talents into, into strengths. Um, so this is what we challenge students to do while they're here. We want them to be able to name what are the giftings that God has placed within you? What are your talents? How can you develop them? And then how do you employ them? How do you use them? And so they're going to have tons of opportunities, whether that's in a discipleship group or if that's in a forum that's, that's sponsored by student affairs or by uh, diversity and inclusion, or if that's in the classroom, we want them to think intently about their wiring, how God has made them, and ways that they can amplify the gifts that are within them and how it actually translates to their academic discipline and their future, their future service, right? So you recognize these faces. I, I hope you do. That's on the screen. Some of you may recognize them. Uh, the gentleman to the, to the far left, you recognize him, right? Who is that? Who is that? Even those who are in the room. Anybody recognize the, the gentleman, the young man to the far left? What's his name? I'm sorry? Anybody know? Who was that? Michael Jackson to the far right. That's exactly right. Michael Jackson, he was known as the king of pop, right? The king of pop. So, so, but before Michael Jackson became the king of pop, he was literally a lead singer for the Jackson Five, right? He was highly talented, but I don't think any of us at that point in his life would have said he's the king of pop. It took time. It took practice. It took relationships. It took, um, Different people investing in him for him to develop the giftings that were in him to be able to grow and for him to be able to optimize them. 
right? Some of you see the gentleman to the far right. I wish I could go through all these, but to the, to the far right at the bottom, you recognize that face as a kid? That was Michael Jordan as a kid. Many people argue that Michael Jordan was the, the best athlete of all time. And we can't say enough, even with what he's done in terms of branding, in terms of the Jordan brand, right? One of his giftings was competition. Competition. But as a kid, we wouldn't have said, hey, he's going to be the best player of all time. We wouldn't have said that, even though he had the talent. It, it wasn't developed. But through practice, putting that talent to use, even through Valley moments of disappointment, like he, he wasn't able to make his high school varsity team. Isn't that something like that was a setback for him, but he didn't give up. He continued to lean into that talent and it developed and it was optimized by the time he reached the ranks of college and 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 professional sports. And now even in in business, the point that I'm trying to make is this academic journey presents an opportunity for students to, yes, first call out what God has deposited within them, but to develop them, right? But it's hard to develop something that you don't even know you have. Some of your students are already acutely aware of their strengths or, or their talents, right? And they're already develop them, developing them, developing them maybe through mission trips or through service at their church or community engagement opportunities. And so that is great. We want that to continue, um, you know, as they engage the academic journey here at here at APU. So I like to use this analogy and I'll be brief with this. I don't know about you. So I'm, I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, and I know a lot of people disagree with this, but I think some of the best food, listen, not just in the nation, but on this globe is, is located in the South. I mean, no doubt about it. Listen, there's nothing like waking up on a Saturday morning like today and having like a plate of pancakes. And I don't know about you. I don't like all the fruit syrup. I like just good, warm maple syrup butter drizzling just a tad. I don't eat like this all the time, so don't judge me, right? But 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 it's nothing like just a good plate of crispy edged maple syrup butter drizzling pancakes. Nothing like it. Nothing like Some of you are eating pancakes right now as you're listening to me, which is which is great. All right? So listen. But nobody goes to a local pancake house and asks for a bowl of pancake batter. Nobody orders pancake batter. Even though it holds potential, we know that it's unrefined. But when you take pancake batter and you expose it to heat and you flip it, and since I have a doctoral degree, I'll make my own word, and you flop it, right? You have this refined product. And so we kind of see your students having giftings. That potential is there, but it's so critical that we create an environment that they cultivate relationships that challenge them to refine their giftings, to develop incredible clarity around their giftings, and even understand how it connects to what they're called to, called to do. Called to do. I hope that makes sense. I know it made you hungry. And so we're almost done. So you can perhaps go to the kitchen and, and stir, up some, uh, stir up that batter and make some pancakes. You know, be thinking about me when you, when you do that. So uh, lastly, some of you recognize this guy beside Denzel Washington there in the APU shirt. Um, so, so this guy, his name is Malcolm Gladwell. And some of you have read books like um, uh, David and Goliath, right? Outliers. He's an incredible thinker. And some of your students may have, you know, thinking, we call them thinking strengths. Now, all of us can think critically. But some of our students, they are energized by moments of introspection and deep thought, right? And so Malcolm Gladwell is oriented that way. And so at our institution, we're going to cultivate that, that type of thought. This is going to be a space where your student is going to be challenged and be able to lean fully into those types of strengths. You know, other students that come to APU, they have relational strengths. Some of you may recognize this guy beside me. I met him in Atlanta right before a conference. Uh, his name is Shaquille O'Neal. Um, now he's on inside the NBA on TNT, but was a prolific, dominant basketball player in the NBA. One thing that I learned very quickly about Shaquille O'Neal, he is highly relational. I mean, this guy has personality that oozes onto everybody, 
right? Some of your students have that type of personality. They never meet a stranger, right? Back in the days when we actually went to stores and we didn't order things on Amazon before the public health pandemic, you would turn around and your student was talking to a person I mean, having a 10 minute conversation and you ask them, who, who was that? Like, I don't know. I just met them. You're like, how, how did you do that? So some of our students have those types of giftings and they're going to have opportunity to optimize them here at APU. We want that type of gifting, that type of talent that God has given them to be amplified, to be purposefully used within their desire profession, but to advance the kingdom. And so we're excited that we have an environment that that provides that type of experience. So I've talked enough and you've been gracious to listen. Um, so I want to I want to conclude with this thought. Um, and I love it. It's actually coined by Eric Rees. He, he's written this book called Shape, uh, how God uses who we are, the complexity of our identity to fulfill purpose in our lives. So God uses like our our, our strengths, our, our hearts, our abilities, our personality, our experiences, all of them converge together, together so that we can step fully into our purpose. So I love this quote, and I think it's befitting to, to conclude with. This is what Eric shares. Discovering your gifts is not the ultimate goal. Using them to bless the lives of others is. Man, that's our hope. That's our hope for your student, that when they come to APU, as they go through this reflective experience, this intellectual experience, this social experience, and they become aware of who they are and how God has designed them and how he's wired them, that they're not just content with knowing, but they're compelled to put that into action. And we have a catch, catch phrase around here at APU that we, um, we reference quite often. It's difference makers. Listen, we don't want to just create scholars. We don't just want to create criminologists or psychologists. That's important. Those professions are critical. But we want to create Difference makers, students who value Christ, who value scholarship, who are committed to building community and who render their lives and their, their, their hearts for service. That's what we want to see in every student that's a part of this community. And so we're, again, thrilled that we can partner with you. Thank you. And your student for selecting APU. Please know that we don't take that. Um, lightly and we take it seriously and uh, we're, we're, we're thrilled that now you're a part of this community and we get to walk with you. So I want to conclude this time with prayer. I want to just pray for you as you adjust to this new chapter. I want to pray for your student and then I want to give way to the next part of our program. Pray with me. God, thank you so much for this day. I'm grateful for the family members who are watching, who are listening. I'm grateful for the moms and dads and the grandparents and the siblings and the mentors and the coaches, the extended family who have poured into this class of first year students who are starting this academic journey in a very unprecedented time, a time where there's a lot of angst, a time where there's a lot of unrest. But Father, as we step into this new semester, we trust in you and we know that you are present and you are going to order our steps. We know that our incoming students are going to develop. They're going to be challenged and they're going to be agents of change in a world that desperately needs the giftings and the knowledge that you've placed within them. God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to partner with the incredible parents who are watching the family members. And we know it takes community. It takes village, a village. God, you use relationships to enhance your work. And so, Father, thank you for this time that we have together. Even though we will experience change, 
we know that you are sovereign and you are at work. And so we trust you through this process. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for your time and your attention. Hey, I would like to turn things over to Alex O. He is the director of Campus Life, and he and his team have done just a phenomenal job at leading uh, efforts surrounding our welcome days. And so can you telepathically show some love to Alex O.? Thank you, Keith, and all the speakers this morning. I uh, really appreciate each of you uh, stepping in this morning. I uh, just wanted to say good morning, or depending on which time zone you may be tuning in from, it may be good evening or good uh, very early morning or very late evening, uh, but wherever you may be tuning in from, uh, welcome to APU, and it's good to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Alex O, oh, and I have the privilege of uh, leading the Welcome Days planning team each year. And I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that this is certainly not the beginning of the school year that we anticipated, uh, but we pray and we hope that each student and each family member tuning in this weekend would really feel welcomed, even in a virtual format. Uh, at this time, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and so we'd like for you to uh, take a stretch break, grab a glass of water if you would like, and we'll be back at 11 o'clock. But again, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in just a few minutes. Cause you are always faithful But Lord I know you're never gonna leave me Even in the valley you were with me Forever I will follow where you lead me Cause you are always faithful You are everything I want Everything I want is found in you You are everything I want Everything I want Lord Everything I want is found in you. You are everything I want, everything I want, Lord. Saving one, you know my heart, you know my weakness. There is not another one so kind and gracious You are always faithful But Lord, I know you're never gonna leave me Even in the valley you were with me Forever I will follow where you lead me Cause you are always faithful
to the darkness Every day I've been to jail like a carcass When I look to see the shore, I'm the farthest And you remind me of the scarlet They can't take away what you gave Got it, rose again, the third day Empty tomb, no games play Thinking they had us, but you broke the chain All about keeping my word is stay up in your truth See your hands and feel all the living room Feel my body when they can't keep me from you Because you gave, I grew because you sowed. When we are given an example of who to be and how to dream, that influence stays with you. It tucks itself into the deepest parts of who you are. I created because you saw me as artist and not unmotivated. I played because you saw me as athlete and not failure. I taught. You saw me as brilliant and not uneducated. I climbed because you saw me as powerful and not incompetent. I found Christ because I saw him reflected in you. This place is where we are built, given knowledge of who God has created us to be and sent out. When athlete, when entrepreneur, when artist, when scholar, when investment at a time. To be seen, heard, and known elicits a great desire to be that for someone else as well. well good morning, and welcome to APU. Your future begins today. I'm a professor here at APU, and one of the things that I do besides teach is I do research. And so I've spent a long time researching what helps college students succeed. So I thought it might be helpful this morning if, if I shared some of those secrets to success with you. Now this picture of your success, graduation day, may seem like a long way off as you're standing at the beginning of this road. Maybe you're feeling a little like you did when you first went to kindergarten for the first time. You might have thought those days were over. Or you may feel like the road ahead is very confusing, full of twists and turns, because college can be hard to navigate sometimes. There's so many choices available to you. And that's true in a normal world, which we are not in. <laughs> what with a global pandemic and lots of concerns about our nation, our world, the racial injustices that surround us, the financial uncertainty, the political divisiveness, and trying to learn in a remote environment. Most of you may be living at home right now, which is not how you thought college would be. Sure, your family is proud of you and has high hopes for you, which can also put a lot of pressure on you sometimes. And they're also around all the time. But no matter what your situation is, you are now at the beginning of an amazing journey with APU. You may not yet know where you're going, but you are definitely on your way. So welcome to an amazing road trip with us. Today we're going to talk a little bit together about what the journey looks like that lies ahead for you, how you are in the driver's seat for this journey, but you're surrounded by people who are here to help you navigate the road ahead, accompany you on the journey, and sing along to the radio, virtually, of course. You may feel like you got this. It's not going to be a problem at all. Or you might feel a little intimidated or unsure of how to do this. You may be feeling a little stressed out about COVID. And if you're like most students starting at APU, you may be feeling anxious about how in the world you're going to make friends or worried about how hard your classes might be. Maybe a little nervous about how this whole remote learning thing is going to work or wondering how to get help if you need it, especially if you're not on campus. Well, we get that. And we're here to help you figure out how to get where you want to go. Now, the destination is up to you. It may be becoming the person you want to be, 
or using your superpowers for the good of others, or getting that degree so that you can have the kind of life you and your family have always dreamed of. Now, this road you're on has plenty of curves ahead, forks in the road where decisions are going to have to be made, obstacles to overcome, and pitfalls that might throw you for a loop. And sometimes you might be running on empty. But when your fuel gets low, we are here to help you fill the tank with friends who get you, classmates who study virtually with you, and with opportunities for your family to be involved in your journey. We're going to remind you of your goals and help you figure out how to reach them. And always, always help you connect to a world that is bigger than yourself to become a difference maker. We want you to not just survive this road trip called college, we want you to thrive. And that's what Jesus' mission was when he was on earth. In John 10.10, 10, it says, He came that we might have life and have it abundantly, filled to overflowing. Or as my favorite translation says, more than is necessary for survival. So let's start by thinking back to a time in your life when you were thriving and life was good. Clearly that was pre-COVID, at least for me. But think about what that was like to thrive. What did it feel like? Take a moment and just feel those feelings again. See it in your imagination. What were you feeling when you were thriving? What were you doing? What were you thinking? Well, that feeling... That's our goal for you at APU, that feeling of thriving, but also the doing of thriving is important for us here at APU. So what is that like? Well, the ABCs of thriving, as you see on the screen, start with those emotions or that affect, okay? Thriving involves joy and energy, but it also means that you are involved in meaningful work that makes a difference. You're involved and connected with others. It also means being mindful. What's going on in your brain is that you are fully engaged in the present, in the moment. And you're able to reframe negative things that happen and to see them as learning experiences. So our definition of thriving is making the most of your college experience. And here at APU, we've actually been studying this. We've been researching thriving in about 50,000 college students across the United States and Canada, as well as here on campus. And so today, I want to tell you a little bit about what it means to thrive and what it takes to thrive. Now, the petals on the flower here represent what it means to thrive, and I'll unpack that for you in a moment. The leaves represent what feeds your thriving. So spirituality, as well as your fit in your major. And the stem that anchors thriving is your sense of community here at APU. That feeling of belonging, that this is your home, even though it's a remote home right now. The soil that enriches and supports thriving is your involvement. And again, while that usually happens on campus, we have lots of ways for you to continue to be involved, even though we are remote. Also part of the soil is your relationships with faculty. So we're going to talk about each of these elements here, beginning with what it means to thrive. So what it means to thrive is, first of all, you're engaged in the learning process. Now, being engaged in the learning process means you're actively connecting what you're learning in each of your classes to things you already know, to things that interest you, and to your own thoughts about your future and your goals for life. But it also means you're connecting with your classmates and with your instructor. Now, that may sound more challenging when we're learning remotely this fall, but your instructors have been preparing for you. They are ready to provide deeply meaningful learning experiences and opportunities to interact with them and with your classmates. 
Thriving students are also academically determined. Now, this means you have goals that you're motivated to work toward, and you are investing the right kind of effort and time in your academic work. And you know how to apply your strengths to the academic challenges that face you. And that's part of what APU will teach you, will help you identify what some of your talents are and how to apply them when you face academic challenges throughout the year. Thriving students are also open to differences and they want to make a difference. So when they encounter people who come from different backgrounds or who have different political opinions or faith traditions, they are open to hearing what they have to say because they realize what a great learning opportunity that is. And you're gonna have lots of opportunity to interact with people who are different from you here. APU students come from many different cultures and backgrounds and have lots of different opinions which means we mirror the kingdom of God in all of its remarkable diversity here. Thriving students also want to make a difference in the world around them, and that's what APU prepares you to do. We use the phrase cultivating difference makers to describe our mission here. Now, thriving students are also connected to others. They have strong social connections, which means enough friends so they don't feel lonely too often, friends who care about them and support them, and actually we found it only takes one good friend in order to thrive. Finally, thriving students have a positive perspective on life. Now what this means is that they believe things will eventually work out if they use the right strategies and work hard. One of my favorite sayings from a movie a couple of years ago is, all shall be well in the end. And if all is not well right now, it's because it's not yet the end. And that's what thriving students think about as they think about what's happening to them right now. If things are not great at the moment, they think it's not yet the end of the story. Now, when the most successful people in any profession are asked to describe their success, do you know that they always start with a story of failure? For instance, Steven Spielberg, you know, the guy whose movies have grossed over $9 billion and who has won three Academy Awards? Well, he was rejected not once, but twice from the University of Southern California's School of Cinematic Arts. Thomas Edison, who invented the electric light, was told by his teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything. Oprah Winfrey was fired from her first TV job in Baltimore. And Michael Jordan was cut from his first high school basketball team. J.K. Rowling was a depressed, divorced, single mother living on welfare when she started writing the Harry Potter books. She says, failure is part of the learning experience. And the only true failure is when you stop trying. So you see, these successful people describe the way that they took these failures, reframed them as learning opportunities, and that is actually what led to their success. So that's the key. When you don't get the grade that you wanted on your first test, being able to reframe that is what is going to help you thrive thinking, what do I need to do differently? What can I learn from this? Instead of concluding that it's all going to be downhill from here. Now that we've talked a little bit about what it means to thrive, let's take a look at what it takes to thrive. So part of thriving depends on what you do. And part of it is what kind of environment you plant yourself in. Your part is to never give up. It's that simple. Never give up. APU has a study abroad program in South Africa, and there is a South African song that began as a protest song during the apartheid era, when the white South African government racially segregated and oppressed black and multiracial South Africans. And the song is called Bambalela, which is a Zulu word that means never give up. When our group visits a church in Cape Town, South Africa each year, they still sing this song now as they are fighting AIDS and poverty. 
They link arms and sing at the top of their lungs, never give up, never, ever, 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 ever give up. Bamba Leila. It's the best advice we can give you. So here's a secret that I've learned after 38 years of being a college professor, and I do want to clarify that I started when I was in kindergarten. But what I've learned over the years is that success is not about how smart you are. Let me say that again. Your success is not about how smart you are. It's about whether you show up and keep going. It's about your persistence. We admitted you to APU, so we know you're smart enough to succeed here. There's no question about that. But what makes the difference between students who graduate and those who don't is whether they put in the effort, the right kind of effort, the right strategies, which is, again, part of what we're going to teach you here. It's all about whether you keep going when things get tough. Now, our part of the deal is that we are the soil that helps you thrive. Just as beautiful plants won't live long in soil that is not carefully watered and tended, we know our students' success is in our hands. So what kind of soil are we cultivating here at APU for our students? Let me tell you a little bit about that. There are five major pathways to student thriving that we know from our research. So what APU does is tries to help you find each of these pathways. Now, we can't do it for you, but we can give you a map, and we can join you in the journey. The first pathway to thriving is finding a major that's a good fit for you, and your success coach and your faculty can help you do this. You may not know your major now, and that's very common in first-year students, so don't worry about that. We will help you find a major that works for you and that is a good fit for your interests and strengths. And if you're a transfer student and perhaps you're thinking about changing your major, we will help you find a good fit as well. Our goal is to help you become the best version of yourself because there is not just one right pathway to success. We're going to help you identify your strengths and how those might fit into a future career. You probably already know a couple of strengths that you have, things you're good at, things that come naturally to you, maybe things your friends have said they really like about you or things your teachers have noticed about you. But you also have strengths that come from your culture, your community, and your family, things your mama or your abuela taught you, mad skills you honed as you tried to navigate the gold line, the ability to speak and think in multiple languages. The key is to build on these strengths to tackle the challenges here. You've been successful before, and it is those same strengths that helped you succeed in basketball, in music, in theater, that are going to help you succeed in the classroom. Now, campus involvement is the second major pathway to thriving, and that's going to look different this year. But as you will learn today, there will still be plenty of opportunities for you to connect with others. The key is to choose wisely. Connect your involvement to your major or to a hobby or interest that energizes you, or perhaps to doing things that strengthen you. Then commit to that and dive deep. The third pathway is your relationship with faculty. And here at APU, the professors want to know you and interact with you. Your part of this is to communicate with us. Interacting with your professors is actually one of the best predictors of student success at APU. And all faculty, that means the people who are teaching your classes, have hours each week that they're available just to chat with you online, no appointment necessary. Might email them ahead of time and say, are you available? Let's meet in the Zoom room. <laughs> you don't just connect with them when you need help, though. You also connect to talk more about a topic that interested you in class or to get their opinion on something or just to get to know them. 
there's also a deeper opportunity for mentoring. Now, mentoring means you're having a deeper relationship with a professor who can be a role model or guide you in decisions you're making or who can talk to you about how they became successful in their career or pray with you or talk about how you're feeling about going to APU. Some are formal mentoring opportunities, perhaps discipleship groups. These are still going to be meeting online, but some are informal times of connecting on Zoom or by phone. It's okay to reach out to any of your instructors just to chat. We love connecting with you. The fourth pathway to thriving is spirituality. Now, this doesn't just mean your religious beliefs or your faith tradition. It can also mean the way you see the world and whatever gives you a sense of meaning and purpose in life, something beyond yourself that you're committed to, that gives you a sense of strength when life gets difficult. That can be a pathway to thriving. Now, this may be about your own spiritual life, and you'll find lots of reasons to pray when you're in college, but we also want to support you in your faith journey through chapel, through discipleship groups, and through classes that help you connect your faith to a sense of hope about what God is doing in the world and how God can use you. And it's completely okay if you aren't sure yet what you believe in or who you believe in. That's part of the journey here too, figuring that out. We'll give you plenty of space to do that. There are lots of different religions and faith traditions among the students here as well as students who aren't sure they believe anything right now. But all of our faculty and staff follow the way of Jesus as they do their work here. And they also understand that their journey might not be the same as yours. Now, the final pathway to thriving is a sense of community, which is a feeling that you belong here. Now, here's the thing about belonging. We are constantly, as human beings, monitoring the environment around us for social cues that signal whether we belong or not. We wonder, am I the only one? Will they like me? Will I make any friends? Am I valued here? Why are they looking at me like that? Should I even be here? And when someone is feeling left out, you can tell by how they act. They may show up late, or be the first one to leave the Zoom room. They may stay muted or not use their camera, although sometimes that may mean they don't want anyone to see their room, which is okay. If you're feeling left out, you may feel like you're the only one. Well, let me tell you that everyone feels that way at first as they try to figure out a new place, and you are not alone in that. But here's the other thing. Sometimes when we struggle, we interpret that as evidence that we don't belong. Don't fall for that. Struggle is a normal part of the college experience. Everybody struggles at some point in time with something. But we tend to think when we struggle that we're the only ones and that these struggles are somehow a sign that we shouldn't be here. Wrong. Everyone struggles. Everyone does. Some of us just hide it a little better than others. So it doesn't mean you don't belong. It means you are a normal human being. And we have tons of resources here for you for every kind of struggle you might imagine. And nothing surprises us. Seriously, nothing. So let me say as clearly as I can that you belong here. We saw something in you, and we are confident you can succeed here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have admitted you. We are committed not only to your success, but to your thriving. Academically, spiritually, psychologically, in your relationships, thriving students don't just succeed in college. They go on to live good lives. They are lifelong learners who meet their goals, they're connected to others in healthy ways and are optimistic about their future and ready to make a difference in the world. You may feel like you're a little squirrely, but inside each of you is great potential that we can't wait to see emerge. So God bless you, 
as you begin this journey here at APU. Now I would like to introduce, with appropriate social distancing time, Stephanie Gala, who is our Director of Academic Success. Stephanie? Thank you so much, Dr. Shiner. Um, first, I wanna just say a personal welcome and congratulations. I add congratulations because this is a significant accomplishment at this point in your academic journey. Whether you're a first time freshman who was just accepted to APU for the first time, or you're a transfer student who's decided to finish your degree here with APU, or maybe you're the first in your family to go to college. I want to celebrate you and say thank you. I'm grateful that you're entrusting all of the faculty and staff here at APU to really journey with you in your degree pursuits. So as Dr. Shiner said, I'm Stephanie Gala, Director of Academic Success here at APU. And I'm also an alum, so I got both of my bachelor's and my master's degree here at APU. I'm the first in my family to go to college, so I know this journey well of needing the mentorship, the support resources to be successful. So I really want to help you understand how you can engage with these resources. So, although we might be starting this fall in a remote, remote learning environment, <laughs> I do want to let you know our commitment to supporting you academically has never been stronger. We have nationally ranked academic support resources and programs that are going to help you in this journey. And we're delivering them all to you, virtually. All of, the, all of these departments that I'm going to mention are still operating virtually for you. So I also want to note you will be sent a digital brochure that is going to have links so that you can click on all of the departments that I'm going to talk about so that you know exactly how to access these resources. So I'm going to let you know right now, our Academic Success Center's goal is to offer opportunities for support services and resources and programming that are going to help you think critically and thrive academically. One of those departments is academic advising. So we provide academic coaching so that you are equipped with, you, with the resources you need to thrive at APU. Most of you, um, if not all of you, should have been already working with an academic success coach all summer to enroll in the classes that you're in. And I do want to say, if you right now are watching this and you're not in full-time units or you haven't registered yet, please email advising at apu.edu and we will get you connected and we will make sure that you're ready to go for classes on Monday. We also have our exploring program. So as Lori mentioned, we do have students who haven't decided on a major yet. So this program is for you. For your first and second year, we're here to journey with you. We will help you find that major fit. We also have our first year experience. So this, camp, this department partners across campus to make sure that we are offering you that first year seminar course for you freshmen that's on your schedule, as well as living learning communities and other opportunities to make sure that you're connected and getting a sense of belonging here on campus. We also have our Gen 1 Scholars Program. So this is a support program for anyone who's the first in their family to go to college. You will get connected to resources, faculty and staff, mentorship, and different opportunities for development. We also want to add there's 34% of our student body that identifies as first generation. We also have our testing center. So for students who need learning accommodations and proctoring, or if you want to take a credit for exam to get some undergraduate course credit, they will support you in that. And if you need to know a little bit more of what that is, again, connect with your success coach, and they'll explain what some of those credit by exams options are. 
We also have TRIO Student Support Services. So this is a program that offers holistic academic support to ensure that you are empowered to continue your enrollment and succeed in completing a degree. They serve 140 students, and there's three criteria to be a part of that program. If you are first gen, if you need a learning accommodation or if you're low income, connect with them and make sure that you apply to be a part of that program. We also have tutoring here at APU, free tutoring, no charge. We have one-on-one, -on -one, we have group, we have tons of support to make sure that you are thriving in the classes that you are enrolled in. You do not need to do that journey alone. Lean into that support so that you succeed this semester and for your entire time here. We have our writing center as well. The writing center has coaches that are ready to support any student at any stage with any project. So you don't have to wait till you're at the end of that paper to go and meet with a writing consultant. If you have writing block and you need to know how to start, they're gonna help you understand how to address the prompt that your professor has provided. I also have two more additional support resources that are not necessarily a part of the Success Center, but I do want to make sure that you know that. And on the digital brochure that you get, you will see links to click on them. But one of those is our Career Center, which is crucial in helping our students understand job-related resourcing. So if you need resume building, if you need mock interview skills, they have a lot of different opportunities to get you connected with inter internships and jobs. Please utilize that resource as you're preparing for your future here at APU. We also have the Academic Service Learning Department which provides community engagement, learning opportunities, and supports students in connecting the content that they're learning in the course with real life experience. And you do need service credits. It is a graduation requirement. So they're one of the ways that they're gonna help you accomplish that is through applying that learning in the classroom. So I just wanna leave with this and let you know, and I hope that you see, you do not need to do this journey alone. We are here to support you in your academic journey here at APU. Now I get the pleasure of introducing Dr. Koba Canales, who is our Dean of Spiritual Life and is gonna to continue to let you know how to engage here on campus. Thank you so much. Well, hello again for those who are with us last night or if you're with us this morning uh, for our time of prayer together, welcome back or welcome if you are just jumping in for the first few sessions today. Again, we are excited to have you here. My name is Koba Canales, Dean of Spiritual Life here at Azusa Pacific University and uh, considered a great joy and privilege to serve our students through campus ministry. And so I wanted to share a few things <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this morning, uh, as you prepare to thrive in your uh, experience through spiritual formation and the ways in which my office uh, particularly provides opportunities for that. So today I really want to uh, explain a little bit of those things in more depth and also point you in the direction where you need to go to find information about the things that I will cover today. So before I dive into those three specific things, chapel service and opportunities in campus ministry, I just wanted to share a quick little story from uh, when I was a freshman in college. I, I I started out as at a university on the East Coast that was a secular private institution. Um, and it took me almost about three weeks before I found another student that shared the same faith in Christ that I held. And that was challenging for me. I was, I'm um, a pastor's kid. I'm born and raised in the church. I was used to being around friends and family and others. And, and now I found myself in a new environment where I was not really used to trying to navigate my own way in terms of how to find ways to cultivate my faith, my understanding of who I was, who God is, my understanding of scripture. Etc. And I remember that was a, a drastic experience when I transferred from that school to 
APU. I came to Azusa Pacific University as a student athlete. My first experiences here on campus were with the football team, um, and I found it so intriguing that as soon as I stepped foot on campus, I had coaches who could not only teach me about a game that I loved that was a huge part of my life, but were investing in my life spiritually. We had Bible studies together as a team. We had coaches that were willing to share their own testimony and life story about how God has been at work in their own lives, and they decided discipled and mentored myself along with so many others. And then I remember the first week of school starting and I remember praying to open classes and I thought to myself, I had never been to a Christian school before in my life prior to that moment. To start a class with prayer was a unique experience. And then immediately after my class, I remember walking into an arena that was full of a few thousand other young people about the same age that I was singing worship unto God and learning about scripture together. And I thought to myself, man, this is the place that God has for me. I didn't think any of this was possible, and I was so appreciative of that experience in my undergraduate time here at APU. And so as I share with you today some of the things that are in place for this fall semester as we are excited about the various ways that spiritual formation will be made available, I want to cover those three major areas that I mentioned just a moment ago. Chapel, service, and campus ministry. Again, chapel service and campus ministry. Before I dive into those things, I do want to mention, and Brittany, who's going to come up after me and share a little bit more, is going to explain a little bit more about a a new website that we have available that is actually going to be like our one-stop shop to get all information that you need for this semester's experiences and opportunities as a student. And that website is called togetherapu.edu. Togetherapu.edu. Brittany, again, will explain a little bit more about what it is and what's on that site, but it's essentially our way of saying, students, we want to make sure that you have a way to find all the information that you need in one place as we get ready for the year. So again, all of the spiritual formation opportunities and programming will be there on that site for you to go ahead and take a look at. Uh, So the next uh, thing that I want to talk about, again, is our spiritual life area consists of three offices, and those offices provide these consistent opportunities for students to engage and explore their own faith identity uh, through worshiping together in chapel, through serving our communities locally, nationally, and globally, and through engaging in campus ministry, discipleship, opportunities, and experiences. As Dr. Schreiner mentioned earlier, we recognize that students are coming to APU from so many different experiences and backgrounds. Some of you may be very committed uh, to a strong Christian faith. Others of you may be very curious and interested to learn more. So wherever you are on that spectrum, uh, we welcome you and we're thankful that you are coming alongside us in this journey. And I am confident that regardless of where you might find yourself, you're going to find this to be a very meaningful experience connected to staff, faculty, and students who are going to be able to meet you wherever you are on that space and help help walk you through uh, this experience together as a community. Uh, So let me talk a little bit about chapel. Uh, Obviously, as we get ready for this semester and as we go into a virtual and remote experience, uh, we're going to have opportunities to worship and gather together virtually, uh, similarly to what we did last evening together. Uh, That's going to take place Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that looks like in this season because of different schedules. Maybe some students are working. Maybe you're trying to figure out different things at home. We felt that it was going to be in students' best interest to provide chapel opportunities that will be available for a long period of time. Typically, our chapel happens at at a particular time. Usually it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1030 to about 1120, and that's how it goes. And and rather than having one hour, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're actually going to leave the viewing window available for about two days, about 48 hours after each chapel is launched. Those chapels are going to be launched on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at midnight Pacific Standard Time, and they'll be available for two days until the next chapel is available. Uh, We are adjusting our requirements. Uh, this year. Typically, we have a three chapel a week requirement. We usually offer about six different venues and offerings every single week. This semester, we're going to be offering three every week, and students will be expected to attend chapel twice a week. And so again, you'll be able to get all of this information. You don't have to worry about memorizing it right now, because it is all available on the website that I mentioned, togetherapu.edu. Uh, The other thing that's important to mention is that the two primary 
primary ways to access chapel for credit for students are to log in through the home.apu.edu portal. You're going to get very familiar with that. You're going to be using that a lot. You could also log in through the APU mobile app. So if you haven't downloaded that app just yet on your phone, I suggest that you do because it's a very convenient way to check on a number of things that are important to your experience at APU. So whether you log in through home.apu.edu or whether you log in through the APU mobile app, those are two ways to receive credit for chapel in the fall. Now, some of you parents might also be watching at this time, and some of you may be wondering, can I also watch and participate in chapel? And the answer is absolutely. You'll find a way to access that on our primary website that we'll have available. We do have a YouTube channel, and all of that will be made accessible to you as well so that you could be following along with all the wonderful things that we'll be studying over the course of this fall semester. So let me talk a little bit about uh, the next thing, which is service. And uh, service is, is a huge part of our uh, educational framework here at APU. It's one of the four cornerstones that we believe is essential to us because we do want to be the kind of place that is not self-serving, but we learn how to put the skills, gifts, and the talents and abilities into motion and into practice through serving our neighbors locally and globally. At APU, we do have a 120 service credit requirement, essentially a, a service credit is approximately uh, one hour, so you could think about one hour or so uh, of time. So 120 service credits over the course of four years is about 120 hours of service that we ask students to do prior to graduation. It is a requirement. And as a result, if you're a student that's coming to APU for four years, the average semester equivalent to service credits would be about 15 service credits. Now, in light of what we're experiencing with COVID-19, we recognize that many opportunities and offerings that we would typically have in place are not currently available to us. So as a result, for this semester only, fall 2020, uh, the Office of Center for Student Action, as well as Spiritual Life, uh, has uh, come together and decided that it's the best interest of our students, as well as the neighbors who we ho hope to serve, uh, to provide students with 15 service credits for the semester. So in other words, we want to make sure that you are not putting yourself or others in harm's way by trying to attain or achieve those service credits for this semester. So for this semester, 15 service credits will be given to students. There will also be ways to engage for those who are interested in online and virtual uh, service opportunities. We have many schools in the area of Azusa that will continue to need tutoring support like we typically offer when our students are mobilized into various campuses to support students and those schools. So we're going to do our best to provide a lot of those opportunities for students to engage that way. And yes, you can continue to, to achieve and, and attain more uh, service credits in addition to the 15 that will already be provided to all students for fall uh, 2020. Um, I want to just share a little bit more about service because I think it's important as you start your journey here that at APU we value serving locally here in the Azusa area, San Gabriel Valley, the Los Angeles area, as well as right across the border in Mexico. We're regularly involved in service and ministry opportunities there. And we also, uh, two summers ago, sent students to 29 different countries to go and be part of service opportunities and learning opportunities overseas. And so these are all experiences and opportunities that we will be working to make available as soon as we can do that uh, uh, safely and within the guidance of our uh, county, state, and national guidelines. And I also want to just cover uh, some opportunities through an office called Campus Ministry. Uh, campus Ministry is our office that provides uh, opportunities for discipleship, engagement, and growth, which can take place through discipleship groups. And believe it or not, we're, we're going to make those available via Zoom uh, over the course of this fall semester. All of those offerings, again, will be found on the same website I mentioned at the beginning of our time at togetherapu.edu. And also we'll be sending emails that have all the information for students to get in, involved and engaged in discipleship groups. Uh, discipleship mentoring is available one-on-one -on -one for students. That can happen with faculty and staff, local community members. And one thing that's unique in this time is because we are doing things virtually, we actually are recruiting alum, alumni of APU who live all around the country and the globe who want to be part of investing in students. And so this semester, we're actually going to experience that for the first time where we'll have virtual mentoring experiences uh, for our students as well. 
And then, of course, for students who might be going through a difficult time. Uh, you may have heard of our University Counseling Center, which is available and ready to meet with students. We have 24-hour services, seven days a week. But we also, through the Office of Spiritual Life, have pastoral care available for students. So if a student wants to pray with a pastor, talk with a pastor, maybe discuss something, ask a question, or just talk about their own faith development, we want you to know that we are available. My team and I would love to spend time with you, uh, maybe just getting to know you, hearing where you're at, hearing any questions you may have, and spend some time with you. So again, all of those opportunities and the information for those are available on the website that I mentioned together, uh, apu.edu. Lastly, I want to just mention our email uh, in case you want to ask a question uh, immediately, maybe today, maybe over the weekend, and you're curious about something that I've shared about our office, feel free to email us at spirituallife at apu.edu. Again, there's, there's two L's in the middle. That's the confusing part, Spiritual life. Uh, at apu.edu. Um, so again, uh, I, I hope that uh, you are enjoying your time over the course of this weekend. I've already been encouraged by some, uh, some messages I've been receiving from families and students who have uh, been sharing that they are appreciating this time together. And so we look forward to being together in person very soon. But until then, we have a lot of exciting and meaningful opportunities over the course of the coming semester. Uh, so at this time, uh, we are going to transition to hear a little bit more about student engagement, and uh, we're going to be able to hear from one of my colleagues who I really enjoy working with. She's going to come and share a little bit more about student engagement opportunities. Uh, so would you uh, help me welcome Brittany Bilar as she sh shares a little bit more about these engagement opportunities. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Brittany Bilar. I'm the Associate Dean of Engagement in Student Affairs at APU. We are so excited that you're here and we're glad um, that you are able to join in our welcome weekend. I wanted to share a little bit about um, what our student engagement looks like uh, this semester and what opportunities you have to connect with other students. Um, as Koba mentioned, we have a centralized platform, a website called Together APU, um, that will help provide resources, relevant information, and activities and events to help you get connected throughout the semester. Um, so make sure you go to togetherapu.edu and bookmark it, uh, make it your homepage, um, whatever you need to maybe take a study break or have a short distraction, or even see what's going on this week and you know find an event that you can connect with your classmates on um, we hope that you utilize this resource to really know what's going on um, student affairs really cares about the holistic development of students so you're learning and growing inside the classroom as well as outside of the classroom so we want to provide developmental opportunities for you to continue to grow and learn and make connections here at APU um, so some of the things that COBA mentioned about spiritual formation activities are great ways to help you grow spiritually and get involved um, in the campus that way. Uh, we also have health and wellness resources. Um, so we have our university counseling center um, where we have counselors. So if you need someone to talk to or help you process something, um, we have university counselors uh, that can talk with you if you wanna make a virtual appointment. Um, we also have our Office of Women's Development that will be providing programs and resources throughout the semester. And then we also have our health center um, who's gonna be open and providing services for our students. They have also been a key leader in helping us to uh, be well and provide guidelines on how we can just stay safe and well during this pandemic. So be looking more for uh, information and resources from our health center. Uh, we also have accessibility, or accessibility and disability uh, resource, resources. And so if you need any accommodations in the classroom to help assist with your learning, uh, we have wonderful staff in ADR that can help uh, you provide you co accommodations um, for this semester. 
Um, we also, in terms of student engagement and connection, uh, we'll still be providing activities and a way for you uh, to connect with others socially, um, as well as find a sense of belonging here at campus. Um, our clubs and orgs will still be available virtually. And check out the list on, on our website. And if you find maybe that, oh, there's something that I'd like to maybe start or an interest or a passion that you have and you don't see it there, uh, we'd love to assist you in helping you start that club on campus. Um, so just know that even if you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it can't exist. We would love to partner with you to see that happen here on campus. Um, we also will have virtual activities that you can participate in. Um, so you can socially engage with your classmates and peers and just have fun um, and relax and take breaks from, from studying and um, hopefully just, yeah, you know, take a breather. So um, we also have um, activities uh, or engaging content on the website that you can also just interact with um, on your own schedule. So um, you, it's not always going to be an actual event, but maybe content that you just interact with on the website. Um, this semester, we'll even be talking more about civic engagement. Um, how do we dialogue about things that matter to us or issues that concern us, as well as how do we learn from one another and truly listen to understand, um, as well as how do we have a positive impact on our the communities that we're a part of? So we'll be having more conversations this semester about civic engagement. And of course, our offices within student engagement, residence life, community commuter life, uh, international students and scholars, as well as our Judicial Affairs Office will be providing resources and activities uh, for you all as students. So know that they are, will be providing services as well. Um, even though, you know, as many have mentioned, um, this semester isn't what we thought it would be, uh, there's still a lot of really great ways where you can intentionally uh, get involved in the co-curricular experience. Um, we know that it's important for you to be involved outside of the classroom because it actually helps you be more successful in the classroom um, when you are being uh, developed holistically as a whole person. Um, so we hope that you get involved this semester. Um, um, I was talking with a international student uh, during our global orientation, and she said something she that just um, reminded me of how unique this season is. She said, "This semester is going to be so special." and and the excitement that came with it. And so I hope that this opens new doors of opportunities for you to get connected in ways that otherwise wouldn't happen. And so this semester, I challenge you to find at least one activity, um, one co-curricular experience that you're gonna participate in. Um, it may be scary, it may be challenging, um, but I just ask that you try and get involved in one thing this semester. And I know it will help you get connected. Um, we're going to take a couple minutes because I thought maybe it might be good to hear from one of our current students, actually a senior here at APU, and share a little bit about their involvement journey um, here on campus. Um, just kind of ask questions and, and hear from them. So Logan Hoffland is with us here today. So thank you for being here. It's so good to see you. Of course. Yes. Um, so Logan, would you just share a little bit um, about yourself? So your maybe your name, your major, where you're from. And um, yeah, what you're currently involved in. Um, so my name is Logan Hoffland and I am a senior here studying biochemistry. I am originally from Michigan and I am currently the vice president for the Student Government Association. Wonderful. Um, could you maybe share a little bit about um, what you've been involved in um, in your time here at APU and how has your involvement uh, shaped your experience as well as how has it helped you be successful? Yeah, so I have been partner, partnering and being a part of a number of things here from intramural sports to being a part of the Science and Religion Club. Um, but what I've been most involved with here over the past two years is the Alpha program within the Office of Campus Life. And so that has really uh, grown me as a person in my faith as well as who I am and what I cherish um, and think is important in this world, mm -hmm. as well as taught me time management, which mm -hmm. I would put mostly with <laughs> being su successful as a student. Um, okay. It's taught me how to be dedicated, but know when it's time to have fun and when it's time to sit down and get your work done. And um, yeah, so that 
probably time management would be my biggest, biggest piece of student success. That's great. Um, what advice do you have for our new students? So we have first year students as well as transfer students. Um, what advice do you have for them getting involved on campus in, or in this, in, um, this semester? I think especially during this time of being remote learning and social distancing would be just to jump in early. Um, go for whatever you can see. If you see opportunities that you're kind of on the edge about, just throw away that fear and just jump in because it's a lot easier to back off of opportunities than it is to find them after you've lost them. Um, so for me, my freshman year, I definitely wish I would have just gone out more because you don't realize everyone's in the same place as you of not knowing everybody, not really knowing where you belong yet. So just kind of step out of your comfort zone and jump into a club or an organization that we still have going on, as you've mentioned, and uh, get to know some new people, figure out who's uh, in a difficult learning situation as you, and just have some fun. Find some community during this time. That's great. Um, yeah, I think that's so important what you just said, and I know uh, Dr. Schreiner mentioned it, that sometimes you feel like you're alone or that you're the only one experiencing challenges or hardships, and I think that's the the, the importance about getting involved is it really helps, um, helps you get involved in a community to to know that you're not alone and that you do have support systems here at APU. We have faculty and staff and your peers who want to journey alongside of you and plenty of resources and support. And so I think that's the important part about like getting involved really early so that you can get plugged into those connections and community so that um, when you do experience challenges, um, you have that built-in support system and resources available to you to get through it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let you know, like I think that's important that you're not alone and um, you know, getting involved helps you find that sense of community. It helps you find that belonging here on campus, um, which is gonna be really important in this season of remote learning. So I appreciate that you said that because I think that's a key involvement uh, piece. Um, yeah, so thank you for being here. Of and course, it's just good of to course. see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> um, yeah, and so just wanted to say, you know, like I said, challenge yourself to get involved in at least one thing this semester. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, you may meet a lot of really great people that become your, um, you know, lifelong college friends and the, the people that you find community with. And so put yourself out there and challenge yourself to do so. And I'm excited. This is going to be a really, really exciting uh, semester. So I thank agree. you for spending time with of us course. today. Of course. Thank you so much for having right. me. Thank you. So today you've seen a little bit about the soil that will support you as you thrive here at APU. Please know we are here to support you every step of the way. Your professors, your success coach, your alpha leader, all the people who support students here. There are places and people that have been designed just for you as you navigate your spiritual life, as you write papers for your class, as you connect with students from other cultural backgrounds and experiences. And remember, your thriving here takes both of us doing our part. Your part is to never give up, and our part of the deal is to challenge and support you every step of the way. So as you start your journey, our wish for you is that you enjoy the ride and thrive. May God bless you on this amazing adventure. Alpha Joy has some announcements for us.
All right, students, families, guests, thanks so much for tuning in thus far. It has been such a joy to receive pictures and emails um, from all of you. Um, God is moving, and we are so glad that we get to do this together. Um, some last announcements for our, um, pr our programming for students. Um, the rest of today is really for you to live out everything that you've learned and heard today. Uh, there will be a Canvas webinar at 1 o'clock, so you'll have a little bit of break, grab a snack, maybe take a nap, grab some lunch. Um, and you will learn about Canvas, and Canvas is our learning management system. If you don't know how to Canvas, you don't know how to get to class. So we want to make sure you know how to Canvas. So that's at 1 o'clock. Your Alpha leader should uh, be there with you. They will send you more details as well if you have any questions. After that, you'll have Alpha group time to debrief and discuss everything that you've talked about today, um, everything you've learned, so you don't want to miss out. Our last announcement and our last official programming for our welcome days is the one that we are so excited about. Um, Good Times is an APU tradition from our current students to our new students, and we did not want to miss out on this. And so at 5 o'clock tonight, make sure you don't miss out. Grab a snack, grab some popcorn. Uh, you're going to enjoy a great show from our current students. Have some laughs, maybe shed some tears, um, and we will see you all tonight. Thank you all so much.